chapter 435 is where we're going to be. Mark 4 and 35. Amen. Mark 4 and 35. Amen. Somebody bring me, bring me a, uh, the water. Let me get the water real quick. Amen. Mark chapter 4 and 35. That's where we are. Mark 4 and 35. Thank you. Amen. 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 How many of you excited about the word of God? So now listen, on this passage here, amen, this passage here, you know this story. This is when Jesus uh, took his disciples and they crossed over in, uh, to a storm. You know that story, the Bible said. And after Jesus had finished teaching them, the Bible says that he told them, let us go onto the other side. Let us cross over onto the other side. And immediately they got into a boat. And as they crossed over to the other side, the Bible says, a storm of wind arose. And it began to beat water, push water into the ship until it was now full. And Jesus being in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow, and I'm, I'm quoting from memory, so I may be off a few words, but not by much. Uh, Jesus being in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow, his disciples said unto him, Master, do you not care that we are about to die? We're about to die. We're about to perish. And do you even care that we're about to lose our lives? Bible said Jesus awake out of his sleep. And when he awake out of his sleep, he got up and he told the wind, wind, peace, be still. And the meat of the wind cease and the waves come. Then he said to his disciples, O ye of little faith, how is it that you don't have any faith? O ye of little faith, where is your faith? And then that last verse said, the disciples, looked at him with amazement and said what kind of man is this that even the wind the waves obey his command i want to look at that because that reminds me of kind of life itself i want to look at this because this talked about storms I, we just got back in town about one o'clock this morning and I understand we left out Tuesday, and I understand that a storm came through St. Louis, uh, especially out in the county area. Tore down a lot of trees, people lost electricity and whatnot. And you know, storms are good and storms are bad. One thing about it is storms will clean up the streets. Storms will also tear down power lines. Not only will storms do that, but storms will also make the baddest person get quiet. When I was coming up, and many of you can attest, when I was coming up, that uh, mama and grandma them told us in times of storms, they told us, get somewhere and sit down. Come on, talk back to me somebody. Because what? God is speaking. You remember that? Amen. God, and, and so in that, we understand that we have to respect storms. Storms are to be respected. And so in this passage, the Bible, I want you to read it. If you want something good to read this week, I want you to read all of chapter 4. And even, I promise you, if you start with chapter 4, you go right into chapter 5. It won't take you long to read it. Read it good and slow. You'll see Jesus had just finished teaching his disciples about parables and lately if you notice i've been preaching on the telephone and even in person we've been talking about parables been talking about how jesus used story parables to get us the message of the kingdom of god and after he finished teaching them in the earlier part of chapter four then he says let's go to the other side and one thing about life is life always has a way of teaching us lessons. You already know that. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody that's on this lot, and no doubt people who are on the phone, I'm talking to those of us who are of age, 
we know that life teaches lessons. I can, I can hear it. My dad has been gone now 22 years, but I can hear him just as clear as a bell when I went to him with my ideas, when I went to him with my way of thinking, and he said to me three words, just keep living. <laughs> Keep living. Them two words. Help me somebody. You, you, you think you got it all, brother. Say, just, just keep living. And life will teach us if we are blessed to be able to have life. It will teach us to keep on living because life teaches us lessons that we cannot learn in a textbook. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And only does life do it, but life does it by way of storm. I'm going to talk to me somebody. But I want to not just focus on that. I want to focus on helping us to understand that when we go through our storms, I want you to understand the position that your Savior is in. Because no doubt, we see already that we're in a storm. And so we know that. But look at this text. The Bible says that Jesus, in verse 35, he says to them, he said, let's cross over to the other side and immediately he took them into a vessel. He took them into a ship that was designed to be on water. He took them into a ship, a boat, and there were other little boats, the Bible says, with them. And as they left the shore, then they got out into the lake of Genesis. The Bible talks about it and says they got out there into the waters, rather. As they got out into the water, the Bible said a storm arose. Notice that's how life is. It never happens when you're on the shore. Get to somebody. Things never look bad while you are cool and calm. It seems like when you step off of solid ground, when you step offshore, when you decide to push forward, then between land and getting to your next destination, there will, and you will encounter problems. You know what took place, don't you? They left, and when they left, there was no storm. No doubt the sun was shining. No doubt it was a great day to go boat. No, no doubt, no worries, because guess what? Jesus told me to go. And can I explain something to help you understand that that's how this year started out? Oh yeah, don't, 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 don't get mad at 2020 just yet. Help me somebody. I, I, if, if I could have recorded your phone conversation, if I could see your text messages, if I could go back on your timeline, I saw you saying, 2019, I'm tired of you, I'm ready for 2020. Come on, talk to me somebody. Oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. You, you, you stayed up at night. You kept it somebody. You cooked food. You bought the blows and the whistles, and you got the champagne, and you got your friends, and you kept it somebody cooking with your chicken wings, and you got everything ready because you were excited about 2020. Oh, girl, this is going to be my year. Turn around, touch your neighbor three times and tell them, 2020, I'm going to see clear that 2020 is going to be my year. 2020 started out right. I'm going to help you somebody. 2020 started off beautiful. We said, oh, yes, it's going to be 2020, 20 this, 20 that. Help me somebody. It's going to be right. But all oh, as it started out, we didn't see no problems. Help me somebody. As it started out, we just we saw this look pandemic didn't bother us. It's over in the whole of the world. We saw it on television and changed the channel. Didn't trip off of it because it wasn't on our home front. But as we got further, just like the disciples, a storm came. And you can imagine, the Bible says that there were other little boats, that to somebody, that was with them. That helps us to understand this. Am I helping anybody? That helps us to understand that you're not the only one going through something. The Bible said, if you look at your Bible, the Bible said, and there were also with them other little boats. Meaning, they're not the only one that's in the storm. If somebody in the car with you, look at them and tell them, you ain't the only one in the storm. Do you know you can be living with a person and not know the storm that they're going through? Do you know, talk back to 
with me, somebody, that you can work next to a person. You can be blood related to a person and not even know what all they are going through. We all go through our own storms. And I don't think we all go through our storms, but we go through the same storm. Help me somebody, but I got good news for you in a few minutes. Because the Bible says that as they went through the storm, Jesus <clears throat> got on the boat and he was in the back of the ship asleep. Now, I got a problem with that. I got a problem when I first read it. I got a problem with that because how can he or someone invite you somewhere and they're not in attendance? How can someone invite you somewhere and then they are not coherent? It looks as if Jesus invited them into a boat, into a storm, and then he went to sleep. Get this on that. That, 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 don't, that, don't, that don't really seem like a good friendly practice. Matter of fact, I don't know what side of the car you're sitting on, but if you're in the passenger seat and the person that's in the driver's seat, if they invited you to go test drive that new car down Highway 7 in Union and look up and say, I'm going to sleep. Let this I, I don't think you'll like that too much. You know, I, I, I know I know we're not ready to get back into flights and flying now, but if the pilot came over the intercom while you're flying out to Vegas in a few more months and said, thank you for flying American Airlines. Uh, we're flying 33,000 feet out of the captain. We let your seats back. Uh, you can use your tray. It's all right to now move among the cabin, among the cabin and good night. I'm going to sleep. You would you would like that. That is somebody. And Jesus, look at what he did. He invited them to come onto the water, got in a storm, and he went to sleep. I often wondered why did he go to sleep. And just to cut to the chase, because it's hot outside, I'm not going to hold you. I'm certainly not going to hold myself in the heat. Cut to the chase. I think Jesus was trying to show us a lesson. I really don't think he was uh, sleepy from his physical standpoint. I think he was trying to show us a lesson. Because the Bible says, not that he was asleep, but the Bible says he was asleep. Get me somebody. And there's a difference between sleep and asleep. Come on, talk to me somebody. There's a difference. Get me somebody. Because you know, you know there are several different realms of sleep. Get me somebody. You have, when a person is into what's called a deep sleep, or what's called REM, R-E-M. And R-E-M is an abbreviation for rapid eye movement. When a person is in deep sleep, their eyes are closed and their eyes are rapidly moving across to somebody, their eyelids. That means they are anywhere between 80 and 95% dead. That means, help to somebody, they are closer to death at that time because they are in a deep sleep and everything is barely being used. Well, I think Jesus taught us a lesson in being sleep here to tell us and to show us that even when we go through a storm, you can still have peace. Oh, I'll help you somebody. That's, that's good news. That's, that's good. If you think that's good news, come on, hold your horn. Put your horn. Say something. That is good news. That is good news. Hallelujah. To be able to know that even in a storm, help is somebody. I may get wet, help is somebody. I may get blown around, but I still can have peace in my soul. And all of us here can attest that at one time or another that we have been in some situations where we should have lost our mind. Where we could have lost our mind. But just because God was in the picture and helping somebody and because you had God and God had you, what you should have lost your mind over, you didn't lose your mind. God gave you peace Get to see in the midst of a storm. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I'm thankful.
thankful. I'm grateful that he gave me peace in the middle of a storm. He, he, I, I, I could have cracked out. I could have drunk myself to death. That was somebody. I could have done a whole lot of things. But because he showed me that I can go to sleep. And I'm going to tell you. And you're going to say, you, I know you're going to say amen. Because don't you know, sometime in a storm, you can get the best sleep. Yeah. I have gotten I have gotten some of the best sleep when it's raining and storming outside. Oh yes. And don't mess around and let up the window and hear the water coming through the gutters and hitting the pavement and hear the wind blowing. It will give you a peace. And it's a peace that surpasses. It can say all understand. I'm almost finished preaching. Look what the text says. The text says that he got on the ship asleep. He gave us peace. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting through the pad. And what happened was that the water started filling up the boat. The disciples started to panic and got into their emotions. And they said to him, Master, do you not care, Sister Bowen, do you not care that we are about to die? Let me tell you, they were talking out of their emotions. Yes, and let me tell you something. Trouble sometimes will cause you to talk out of your emotions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Versus talking out of experience. Yes, Can I get a witness? Yes, a lot of times, if you're not cautious, you'll talk out of your emotions. That's right. You know, you, you, you know, you know who in your corner. Let me talk to you. You know who's in your corner. Yes, you know already in your life if they've been in your life any time now, you know who is for you and who ain't for you. Come on, let's talk somebody. You, you, you already know if they've been in your life any amount of time, you know who's on your side and who really ain't on your side. And so, if they come up on a rough patch, listen to this now, if they come up on a rough patch in life and they open their mouth and say some crazy, help it somebody, say something out of out of character. You don't judge your whole relationship based off of what just came out of their mouth when you already know how what where they stand on you with relationships. In other words, the older saints reminded us, baby, I'm sorry. Charge it to my and not my my heart. Because you have to know you have to know a person's heart yes, sir. even if they head don't speak right. That's it, that's it. That's it. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I got to be my own usher. You got to know a person's heart even if they head ain't speaking right. You can't just go off of what somebody say during a difficult time. All of us have emotions. Help me somebody. And guess this, watch this now. Let me, let me really break it down to you. And emotions are tied to your feelings. And your feelings, here it go, is tied to your flesh. And your flesh is sinful. That is somebody. So that's going to show you you can't go off your emotions because your emotions is tied into your feelings. Your feelings is tied to your flesh. And your flesh is tied to sin. All have sin. That is somebody. And come short of the glory of God. So when I'm in my flesh, that means I'm in my feelings. Yes, sir. When I'm in my feelings, that means I'm in my emotions. Yes, sir. When I'm, in, when I'm in my emotions, that also means my thinking or my speaking may be unstable. Listen to what they said. They said to him, Master, preach, Reverend. Master, you don't watch it. I'll hoop out here. And I'll to you for you. Master, do you not care that we are about to die? Been a whole lot of that been going on right now here. With this pandemic going on, a whole lot of folks been saying, do the Lord even care? Let me cut to the chase. Yeah, he can. I 
ain't got no doubt about it, the Lord cares. How does the Lord care? The Lord knows. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. If you know he knows, blow your horn if you say he knows. Oh, yes, he knows. The Lord knows. The Lord cares. Pastor, how can you say, how can you say, baby, how can you say he was in his emotions? They were in their emotions. Because look at what they said. Yes, sir. They said, Master, do you care? Well, the first word, they just should have said master. Master means one who rules all. Master means one who is in total control. Master means there's nobody above you. Help me somebody. And they're going to say, master, do you care that we're about to perish? They asked them that because he was asleep and they were panicking. With all this going on, on he was sleeping, yes, sir. showing us why y'all tripping off of what's going on when you got me on the boat. You got me. I'm on the boat. You got me on the boat. No need to trip. Do you care? The Bible says, let me hurry on. I, I could preach this much longer, but I'm not going to do it. The Bible says that Jesus arose, got out the boat. Got, I'm, sorry, not got, I'm sorry, Rose got out of his sleep. Yes, sir. Spoke to the wind. Oh, spoke to yes, the sir. water. And the water and the wind behaved. Yes, sir. Get to somebody. Yes, the God you serve yes, sir. and the God I serve, he got that kind of power. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Now, I, I could say it in correct vernacular, on, but man. it just sounds better when I say it ebonically. He got it like got that. It like the God I serve, he got it like that. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, why don't you just open and just declare it in your car? My God got it like that. Hallelujah. He got it like that. He woke up. Can I tell you what happened? He laid down like a, uh, a deacon, deacon Wheaton. Cousin, he laid down like a natural man. Oh, LaDell, where you at? Somebody go get LaDell. I'm ready to get out of here. He laid down like a natural man. But oh, he got up like the God that he is. Oh, I'll help you somebody. I said he laid down like a natural man. But he got up like a God. He laid down. 33, 30 years old. That is somebody. But he got up. That is somebody older than creation. He laid down. That is somebody. Mary's son. But he got up. The only child of God. That could bring somebody. He laid down. That is somebody. Knowing that he was tired in his flesh. But he got up. With all the power in his hand. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And the God you serve, the God I serve, don't you underestimate God. And I'm here to tell you right now, God ain't sleep. Wait until somebody will tell him God ain't sleep. No, no, he ain't sleep. Don't fool yourself for a minute to think that God is sleep. God is wide awake. Get to somebody. And I, I want to tell you that, Pastor, how can you know him? Well, I can speak for him. Pastor, how, how can you speak for him? Is it because you're about to turn 50? No, they ain't got nothing to do with it. Pastor, can you speak for him just because you're preaching? No, they ain't all got to do with it. I can speak for him because that's my dad. I can speak for him because I'm his child. I can speak for him, and he just gave me an amen. He gave me the wind to tell him to go ahead and preach. I can speak for him because I am trying him for my own self. And I can tell you that this ain't nothing for God. I can tell you what's going on ain't nothing for God. I can tell you whatever you're scared of, whatever you're dealing with, it ain't nothing for God. Well, matter of fact, why don't you do what he do? In a time of storm, why don't you stop panicking? Why don't you stop asking emotional questions? Lord, do you care about me? Lord, do you see me going through? Lord, do you see me? I done lost my job. 
Do you see these people die? Do you care? Yes, he cares. Yes, he cares. Yes, he cares. Yes, he cares. Are there a witness? Yes, he cares. I say, yes, he cares.
privilege is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what peace we pains we often have. All because we fail to carry everything to God in prayer. Thank you. We say thank you on this parking lot. We say thank you at church. That's what we are now. We thank you. We thank you for everything you gave us. We thank you for everything you did give us. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. And we shall continue to bless your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that's a golden hand. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Brother Wilson. Amen. Brother Wilson. Amen. I'm going to use my boat.